My plumber said he would never come to my house again if I made this video, but here I am anyway. So let's get started. I'm gonna right click in the media pool, dive on in and create a new fusion composition. Now, if we double click on that, we'll jump into fusion. Let's create some text here. I'm gonna click this button here just to make sure I'm looking at two viewers. Press one to preview this in viewer one type drippy i'm gonna use a font bubble gum it's a free font and now you have visual proof not that i thought you didn't believe me click and drag on the size now let's change the color i don't like using the color here because there's no little drop down which means you have to use your system's color picker which is never great so let's click on this button here now i've got a drop down color tinted do whatever so much better and you're probably thinking to yourself, what is green text without a purple background? Well, click the background. And because text one was selected, we automatically have a merge when we do that. Let's press one to preview that. And our background is on top, clicking also on the merge, pressing control T, flip that, click on your background, drop this down somewhere about here. Now we want another background and we want its color to match the text. So click and drag this eyedropper over our text. This is how we make the actual drip. So we're gonna click on this B spline. And what I'm gonna do is create a very simple shape. Click, 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 and then click on your first point to close it. We'll have this oval shape and we could click on this background node and press two so we could see it in this other viewer. This is very simple on purpose because I wanna animate simple shapes and then add complexity to them later. If we click on our B spline, I'll just move it up a bit here. You could see here, we've got a keyframe. It's on the very first frame. So that's great. Now what we could do is drag to, I don't know, let's say 60 frames. I'm working at 60 FPS, so this'll be a second of animation. And take this drip and and just move it down here. And we could play that back just to see how it looks. I will drag this over so I don't have to preview everything. So at this point, I'm just looking to see if the timing of my animation is okay. And it is okay, but it's very linear. So you can see I've got my spline window checked on, but you don't see it. If I turn this off and turn this back on, you'll see it. The reason why you didn't see it before is if I mouse over here and press F4, it makes your node window cover this entire panel, press F4 again. And you could do the same thing with your splines. Mouse over here, press F4, make that fit the entire view, which is very useful and give myself a little bit more room. I'll hit this button to frame up my animation. And I wanna grab both of these keyframes and press F for flat. I wanna take this handle, I'm gonna hold on Alt first and then click and drag. So I got a nice long ease into that last keyframe and let's see how this plays. And also I hate how this window scrolls like that. So right click in this view and go to scale, turn on manual instead of auto scroll. And now let's frame this up again. So this should work better. So use your handles to get the timing how you want it to look. So over here, I'm gonna press F4 so we see both windows. And then over my nose, I'm gonna press F4 to maximize that. Now what I can do is combine these two together. So I'm gonna take this merge output, drag it to the background output, and let's do a little bit of cleaning here. Something like that should work. Okay, now let's preview this merge two by pressing two. And we see that we don't see anything because our drip is behind. So let's click merge two, press control T to flip those around. All right, so now we got a very unconvincing drip, but at least our timing is good. Now we could start to modify this a bit. So I'm gonna click on the B spline. I wanna make sure that I'm on this little keyframe here. So we could drag our time and just make sure those are lined up because I wanna avoid making any unnecessary extra keyframes. I'm gonna give myself some more room here. I'm gonna click on this one viewer. What I'm gonna do is clicking over here, I'm gonna add an extra point. Clicking over here and dragging, I'm gonna add an extra point. Now it looks a little sharp at the bottom, so I'm gonna click somewhere about here and somewhere about here, and then maybe take these in a bit and this is a little disconnected at this point. So if I wanna make a smooth curve with B splines, you really need at least three points. So I'm gonna click one point right about here, one right about here, and one right about here. And now I could take these points, make some adjustments, 
try to match the curvature of the shape. Now I'll do the same thing on this side, give myself a few points to work with. With this extra detail, we'll try and get something that looks half decent. And now to preview this, I just wanna click off so I don't see those curves and let's play this. All right, so that looks good. I think it's a little bit at an angle, so I'm gonna quickly fix that by clicking on the spline. Again, making sure that I'm on my keyframe. I'm gonna drag all three of these points here and move them over a bit. Maybe it's a little bit fast, so I'm gonna come back into the spline editor, pressing F4, framing this up. I'm gonna hold down Alt and then click and drag this handle in a little bit. Take this one, drag it over a little bit, give myself a little bit more time there. All right, that looks good. So we've done the hard part. Now the easy part is we could just copy and paste. Mousing over here, pressing F4, take this B spline and do a Control C with it still selected, Control V. We've got two right on top of each other. Move the second one over a bit, up a bit. And they're exactly the same, which is no fun. So I'm gonna make some slight adjustments here. This one, again, making sure that I'm on that keyframe. Maybe this one will be a little bit smaller got this part sticking out, which we don't want. So let's bring these in. Actually, maybe we do want, let's get a second drip in here. And now I'll just try and make this match up a little bit better. Click and drag, maybe somewhere around here, this in. All right, so it's starting to just match that curvature. This is a little sharp at the bottom, so I'm gonna click and drag, click and drag, and take this one down a bit there, and this one down a bit there. Let's see how this looks. All right, and I see there's an issue with the start because the point is sticking out, so let's fix that. I'm just gonna take all of these points, move them in, and that covers that. Of course, you rarely want things to all happen at the same time, so let's take our B spline, press F4, over our spline window, press F4 again, and let's have our smaller drip happen a little bit faster. Maybe even faster still. You could continue to do that for the rest of the letters. You've seen everything and you know how it's all done. I'm just gonna skip ahead. I've got all my drips here. I laid them out horizontally just to take up less room, but this is still not an efficient way to work. I'm gonna select all of these, Control G or right click and go to group, nice and clean. Let's just make this view look a little bit better here. All right, we can connect it to the media out while we're here. And I could select that, press two to preview the media out. This background is mostly for colors and setting things up. So I'm gonna hold down shift and click and drag off of that because I don't really want the color at this point because I actually really just want the transparency now. But I could also take this merge and delete it, connect the text back up here, text on a transparent background. Everything is looking nice and clean. With this merge select, Let's shift space, add a very blur, V-A-R-I will get you there. This we need to raise up higher. If we're not seeing anything, let's switch this to Luma. So we could bring this up. Let's try, I don't know, 30, maybe that's too much. That's a lot, but now we have a bigger slider to work with. So we could see we got some some nice rounding around the edges. I'm gonna click and drag this brightness contrast node in here, turn off the colors, turn on the alpha, and let's drag this gain all the way up. Now, I'm gonna be using the free plugin called Crocodove. You could download the Crocodove suite of nodes from Reactor, it's completely free and really easy to do. So once you do that, let's select this, you can type PLAS and you got plastic. I'm gonna set this combine from merge to add. I'm going to click a color here. I'll get more detail with the color later, but let's just keep this as a placeholder for now. Let's go into the light settings and check out what we could do with the height here. Also the position, if you want it on the other side, drag that number over, drag on here to adjust the angle that way. Now let's go into our shape and we could click on this little point to start cropping it in a bit. You could also drag up and get some different looks like that. Click on this end, drag this one over to the right a bit and up or 
down to get a little bit of a different look. All right, so we're starting to get a lighting effect. It's a bit big and blobby. Let's go to plastic. Let's go to our blur size, bring this down, and you'll see it starts to fit the contours better. All right, so 1.0 seems to work pretty well. Now, if I drag on this slider here to the left, I'm gonna start to get some fall off. Eventually, I'm gonna get too much fall off, but I like the way that it's looking at this level. So I'm gonna keep that and just use a mask. Okay, so I'm going to move this over here and take the output of my brightness contrast, drag it onto the mask, that little blue triangle. I could also alt click on that just so I could see this a little bit more clearly. And now we could bring our background back. Let's click on its output, drag it to the plastic output. We've got a merge, it's in the wrong order. So click on it, control T. And now we can come back into the plastic, start adjusting the color to try and get something that works. Okay, and take a look and see what we got as it's animating. All right, so we're getting there. Let's see if we could boost these colors up a little bit. What you could do is shift space bar, C-O-L-O-R-G, color gain. Hold down to shift and put this over this line so it's in the flow. What I'm gonna do is go through all of these tabs up here. I'm gonna do it quickly so you don't have to get bored. Okay, so here we are. We got a little bit more drama in these colors. We could see obviously a before and after there's gonna be a big difference. I think maybe our background is a little too bright now. So let's select the background. Let's drop this down a bit, maybe even shift it. So there's your text, nice and drippy.